we really understand why local state is called local state when we look at what happens when there are multiple mutable functions in the same program. So here's my implementation. Let's first say that John has a bank account represented by a withdraw function where John has $100. And his friend Stephen also has a bank account with $100,000. So John can, John is a function, Stephen is a different function, and they're not the same. And they're not equal. And why is that? Well, they're representing different bank accounts with different amounts in them. So if John withdraws 10 and then draws another 10, Stephen has an entirely separate account with 100,000 in it. And he pulls out maybe 1,000 at a time. But notice by doing that, he's not affecting John's total. So if John takes out another 10, it's just marching down the balance that John has within its function. Stephen has this separate balance with a thousand in it, uh, and so it can take out another thousand whenever he wants. But if John ever tries to take out a thousand, well, that's not going to work out because there's so little funds in there that it's more reasonable to take out just one at a time. Or if a really important purchase comes up, then of course John could take out a whole 16. Stephen, on the other hand, can be pulling out 10,000 at a time, no problem, or another 80,000, or another 7,950. Now we've reached a point where both Stephen and John have the same balance, but they're still not equal because they're different accounts. And they're still not the same. The only sense in which there is some equality relationship there is that if they both withdraw the same amount at this point, then their balances will be equal. So just for this brief amount of time, John has a balance of 50 and Stephen has a balance of 50. But John just withdrew a dollar and so now they no longer have an equal balance. So we've reached a point in our writing of programs where we've lost something called the referential transparency. Perhaps this was something you didn't even know you had. Let me tell you what it is. Expressions are referentially transparent if substituting an expression with its value does not change the meaning of the program. So let's say I have just multiplication and addition call expressions that are used in order to make some computation. This was from long ago in the course. In a referentially transparent program, if I replace mol 4, 6 by its value, 24, I have a program with the same meaning. So it's an expression that still evaluates to the same value. If I, again, replace add 2 and 24 with its value, 26, I still have the same program. It looks different, of course, but it has the same meaning. Everything evaluates to the same thing. Now, this is only true when we have referential transparency. Mutation operations undermine that because they do more than just return a value. They change the environment. So this expression would be different from this expression if adding somehow changed the environment in addition to adding together its arguments. Now adding doesn't. These are referentially transparent expressions. But when we have mutation, which is the enemy of referential transparency, then you run into trouble. So let's take a look at an example where referential transparency is lost. This example is also just a good practice for understanding non-local assignment. So I would suggest you try to work through it yourself before you watch me. OK, here's what's going to happen. We'll define f, and then we'll call it on the argument 1. 
So x is bound to 1 in a frame f1. Immediately we rebind x to 4. And then we define another function called g, which gets returned. That g function is returned and bound to a in this assignment statement. And then we call a on 2. So what's a? Well, a is this function g. And g of y gets bound where y is equal to 2, introducing a new frame, the g frame, with y bound to 2, which defines another function h and returns it. And that return function h will be bound to b, according to this assignment statement. So now we have a and b bound to g and h respectively. And what we're going to do is call b twice. In the first call to b, I'll pass in the argument 3 for its formal parameter z. OK, so we've made a call where z is bound to 3. And x is declared non-local. And then x is rebound to whatever x is currently plus 1. We have to look through the current environment, which starts with f3, and then goes to f2, and then its parent is f1, and its parent is the global frame, and find the first occurrence in this chain where x is bound, which is here, in the f1 frame. So any change to the value of x will be a rebinding in this frame. In this case, we change it from 4 to 5. Then we return x, y, and z. Well, there's z, it's 3, there's y, it's 2, there's x, it's 5, and the total is 10. So let's remember this for a long time. This thing evaluated to 10. We have to remember it because we still have to evaluate this thing. So the total will be 10 plus something else. Okay, what's the something else? Well, it's what you get when you call the h function on 4, which rebinds x to x plus 1. Which x? Well, let's look. We first look in f4, there's no x. Then we look in f2, there's no x. Then we look at its parent f1, there's the x. That's the one we're going to rebind. Now it's 6 instead of 5. And we return 4 plus 2 plus 6 is 12. 10 and 12 together gives us a total of 22. So there's an interesting example of how non-local works. But what about referential transparency? Well, this used to equal 22, and b3 evaluated to 10. But what if instead I replaced this function call by its value? And then I visualize the execution. The difference now is that the effect of calling p would never have happened, because I use the value instead. And so the total is 21. There was never a second call to the h function, because I just used the value 10 instead of calling b on 3. And therefore, x only got incremented once, instead of being incremented twice, from 4 to 5 to 6. So this program has a different meaning from the one where I wrote b3. And the reason they're different is that now I have functions that cause mutations. Referential transparency is lost.